Hello students, welcome back to my class and today we are starting a new poem to autumn written by John Keats and before I start teaching with the poem I would like to uh, give you a brief biography of the poet that is Keats. John Keats was born on October 31st 1795 in London, England and he died in Fe on February 23rd 1821 in Rome, Papal States in Italy. He was an English romantic lyric poet. He devoted his short life to the perfection of poetry marked by vivid imagery, great sensuous appeal and an attempt to express our philosophy through classical legend. So I would like to just give you uh, some more uh, in information about his life. He was the oldest of the four children and he lost his parents at a very young age. His father was a stable keeper and he died when Keats was just eight years old and his mother died of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is TB six years later and uh, after his mother's death Keats maternal grandmother that is Nani appointed two people as his guardian and when Keats was 15 he was withdrawn from the school to apprentice with an apothecary surgeon and study medicine in London hospital and 1816 he actually uh, got the license to practice, practice his profession. But he decided to write poetry instead. So now let's talk about the poem, this to autumn. The central idea of the poem is its appreciation of nature and the changes that occur in nature. Moreover, the passage of time is also present in the poem. Keats beautifully presents the imageries to the reader. So this poem is an ode to autumn. It is a lyric on autumn and the poet describes the rich beauty of the season, its colors, fruits and the earth. So most of the poets actually uh, they do not uh, like autumn season. All the Most of the poets they appreciate and write poems about spring season but John Keats, he found or he saw beauty in autumn itself. So he wrote a beautiful poem on autumn.
in this poem, John Keats' treatment of autumn is quite different from other poets. Other poets, they actually uh, think of autumn with the feelings of melancholy. But here, Keats is, has not pictured the season as of death and decay. To him, autumn is the season of happiness and beauty. He sees the beauty in autumn and in here autumn is personified in the form of a woman in a farmer, as a gleaner, as an orchard man. So here poetry and sculpture, they are blended together. This poem is so full, so rich in imagery that you can easily uh, see the vividness of its beauty. So when we read the poem, we'll find the beauty itself. So this poem is an ode to autumn. Now, what is the meaning of ode? The word ode means a lyrical poem where a subject is addressed. And here in this poem, the subject is autumn. Autumn is personified here, who is addressed by the poet John Keats. Now let's read the poem, stanza one. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit and wines that round the thatch eaves run, to bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. To swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until the thing warm days will never cease for summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells. So, in these opening lines, the poet is picturing the sights of the fruits, ripening fruits, during the autumn season. Now, autumn comes after the summer season. So, some autumn is the season of ripeness, of harvest. So, here he's saying the season of mists 
and of mellow fruitfulness. That is, mellow is ripe, ripe fruitfulness. He is talking about autumn as a person. Here, autumn is personified, and here he is being uh, treated as a close bosom friend. A bosom friend means a very close friend. Jigri dost, jise kehte hain. A close, very close friend, heart. Uh, friends which are very close to the heart, close bosom friend of the maturing son, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the wines that round the tat eaves. Now here, he is saying that autumn is conspiring with the son, that they are in close uh, relation and they are thinking or planning how to load the fruits, how to load the trees with fruits. So here it is showing autumn with a very uh, warmth and richness of the season. So it also breathes a spirit of happy contentment. In other words, the poet's simple and direct love of nature find a better and fuller expression. So here he is saying it is the season when atmosphere is misty and the fruits get, get ripened. The bright sun has also been called its intimate friend as the heat of the sun is very much required for the ripening of the fruits and the wines. Wines are the grape, uh, grape wines uh, which are spreading along the projected portions of the straw roofs, thatch roofs are the straw roofs. जो जैसे अपने यहाँ झोपड़ी होती है, झोपड़ी के ऊपर अंगूर की बेल चढ़ी हुई है, and then they are loaded with grapes in autumn season, and the grapes get ripened and juicy with the heat of the sun. So in this way, autumn and sun, they work in cooperation. They are friends. And they are working in cooperation. To bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. So here he is saying, this bright sun shines clearly in the sky and all the fruit, that is apples, grapes, all are ripened to the full. And there is plentiful crops of fruits and vegetables. The wines are covered with grapes and the moss covered trees of the cottage gardens bend with the weight of the apples which are ripened to the core. Now here, and to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has over brimmed their clammy cells. That is now the sun and autumn they are planning to swell the gourd. Gourd is a kind of a vegetable. Uh, say ghia ki uh, family ki hai, god and like uh, ghia tore to swell the god unko fulana that is to make them fat and plump the hazel shells now these are hazel nuts and to plump them unka bhi mota karna to ripen karna hai. with a sweet kernel kernel jo dry fruits ka jo seed hota hai to hazel jo nuts hoti hai Unka jo kernel hai, beej hai, that is edible. So to make it more fat and more plump, so they are planning, sun and the autumn, sun and autumn are planning to ripen the uh, uh, kernels of the hazel shells. And also to set budding more, budding more, that is to uh, produce more and more buds that can develop into flowers. 
and still more later flowers for the bees that is you know that during the summer time there are the there's crops there are flowers there are birds and the bees they come and collect the nectar from the bees from the flowers to make honey so they are they are planning to uh, bring out more and more birds and flowers so that the bees can collect nectar and make honey until the thing warm days will never cease now what is they over here they are the bees over here ki jo madhumakhi hain they want to collect honey so that they can uh, collect nectar so that they can produce honey until they think that the warm days will never cease for summer has over brimmed their clammy cells clammy is very sticky chip chipa if you have seen you you all have seen uh, honey honey is shahad when you touch honey it is very uh, sticky so he says that these honey uh, the hives of the uh, bees hives hives hota hai uh, madhumakhi ka chhatta so they have collected so much of honey that it is over brimming over brimming means overflowing with the with their clammy cells now if you if you have seen the um, you can uh, hive you can see that there are small 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 cells in the hives chote chote khan hote hain hives mein madhumakhi ke chhatte mein and all these cells are filled with honey and now they are overflowing with that honey so he is saying that this in this uh, first stanza keeps is trying to produce the plentifulness and the abundance of fruits flowers vegetables and even the bees and honey so this is a this produces a very rich picture of autumn there is such a rich harvest of flowers in autumn and so wide is the opportunity for the bees to collect honey that they feel that summer season will never end and it will continue forever and already their hives are overfilled with honey and there is no space where they can keep their honey so rich is the harvest that autumn provides to them so it is a season of ripeness in plenty which is described in the first stanza so for today this is all for now this first stanza i've uh, taught you uh, i hope you've understood it and in the next uh, session i'll be doing the second stanza so the explanation of the first stanza in brief is that in the first stanza of to autumn keats personifies autumn as one who is friends with the sun and the personified autumn and sun they conspire how to bring fruit and vegetation to their most ripe state it is just before harvest time and the plants are ripe and full autumn is in a vibrant state so vibrant that bees might think the warm days will never cease madhumakhi soch rahi hain ki garmiyan kabhi khatam hi nahi honge and the notion of mists and mellow fruitfulness indicate an early part of the day that is mist mist is in the morning time so this first stanza is actually hinting at the morning time keeps even ends the first stanza by saying that summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells meaning that the end of the season of the growth has pushed the elements past their points of ripeness that they have brought so much of ripeness in them so this autumn is a season full of ripeness if you think of autumn 
पतझड़ का जैसे सीजन आता है ऑटम सीजन इज़ द पतझड़ का सीजन सो इट डज़ नॉट ब्रिंग वेरी गुड वेरी हैप्पी मेमोरीज नॉर्मली इट डजेंट ब्रिंग दैट दोज हैप्पी ब्लिसफुल मेमोरीज बट वैन वी रीड जॉन कीट्स ऑटम देन वी फील वेरी हैप्पी देर इज नो मेलनकली इन दिस ऑटम सीजन सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस एंड दिस इज ऑल फॉर नाउ थैंक्स